game was the Liverpool uh, Real Madrid. There was a lot of tension coming in. First of all, <laughs> I don't know. You watched the game too, right? <laughs> that game was like it. It, it, it was like I, I was telling someone because I watched it in um, I watched it at a, a bar with a couple of friends. And I was telling someone like this game is more there's more intensity and more pressure in this game compared to the um, the one that they played in 2018 or 2019 because for some reason there's like a, a more hype to this and it's crazy because Ronaldo was still there like Cristiano Ronaldo was still sure. was still was still playing so I was just I was just wondering like why is there so much tension and so much hype but Madrid got it done man Madrid got it done the Yo, greatest you're not wrong, man. Madrid, they've been doing this for a long time, man. All they know is winning, bro. I'm not a Madrid fan. I'm a Arsenal bro, fan. Bro, I... Let me just, I, let me just put I, it just, out there. Put it we out got, there. We got to put I, respect. We got to put some respect bro, on that. Name, respect you know? to the core, man. Like, it, I'm not even... This is like... I'm not even... I, I can't... I ain't even mad, bro. Like, 14 Champions League, bro. Guys are still Dang. doing, like, what? When guys win one, it's like parade forever. <laughs> Oh, uh, for those of you that don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm a Man United fan and I have three, right? Yeah. That, that's nothing compared to what Real Madrid have done. But uh, yeah, well, you know what? Welcome to the Top top 5 Sports Podcast. Uh, my name is Chike Ubaka and I got my none other crazy, crazy, crazy guest, CY, in the building. And yes, um, you know, today's episode in honor of the Champions League that was played, Real Madrid, Liverpool. Madrid took that one home, um, getting their 14th Champions League. Uh, we're going to be talking about the top five Champions League finals ever. Mm-hmm. And this is going to be, this is going to be, I think this is going to be just an interesting conversational topic. I mean, there's been a lot of finals that have been played, uh, but I just think there's a few that stand out. Um, today's own was special, but. I, I don't know. I don't think it was up there. Like, you know, I don't think it was. It was great, but it wasn't like in your face, like, you know, it's crazy performance. The only thing that stood out, I would say, is Coutoir. I think that was the best goalkeeping performance I've ever seen in a while. Like, what are your I think, thoughts? I think that, you know, Coutoir is, you know, the guy has been incredible his whole career, right? From Atletico to Chelsea and now Madrid, but, you know, I feel like a lot of people doubted him at some point that, you know, having this kind of game really says, like, you know, it brings his his story to a full circle. Yeah. Yeah, that that doubt. He, he, I think he had a he had a after the post match. He was like, he saw the tweets from people saying you're gonna get pounded today, and he he was like, I I want y'all to put some respect on my on my yeah, name. Yeah, you, you got it, man. Give them the Lebron yams, man. The What's Lebron yams, man, for real. That's the Lebron yams, <laughs> man. But that, this Madrid core, bro, with the Tony Cruz, Luka Modric, Benzema. I know I know Marcelo didn't play, but those guys. This this era of Madrid is I, I think it's the greatest era of Madrid, bro. Bro, I'm not gonna lo, low key, low key. If you told me this like what three years ago, I would have had a debate. But because I I, I strictly respect the whole Iniesta, Xavi, and absolutely, um, what's that dude's yeah, no, name Messi. again? Um, no, not Messi. The other Busquet, right? Busquet. Oh, I yeah. respect I respect that trio in the midfield. But bro, this guys, Modric. Cruz and Casemiro. Casemiro, oh my They have God. done something that no other midfield trio would ever do. And j- five f- champ- three of them, five champions, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Dominate. Like, bro. They the game, they are, bro, like, they don't do it the same as Barcelona. Because I know, no. you know, both of us, we grew up with the tiki taka. Like, exactly. So that's why we have that thing for Barcelona. But these guys, like, they showed us that, man, you don't necessarily, you can spread that ball. Bro, it is, like, and what what's crazy is that they know their rules. Casemiro is on the ground doing the dirty work. Cruz does the technical work. And then you have Modric doing the classic work. Where he's looking, 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 holding the midfield, making those passes and those runs. But, man, bravo, man. 
<laughs> That's all I can say. This is a uh, this is classic. That's all I can say. We witness we witness history. Are finally getting the shine, bro. Because he's 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 those... definitely taking the Ballon d'Or. Mm-hmm. I, 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 that's I'm saying it right now. Yeah, Ballon it's hard to deal with someone like Ronaldo, man. You know, <laughs> so to get the shine with Ronaldo. I mean, not like of course Ronaldo is, is I mean, incredible. But like you know, for for somebody as great as Benzema, like you, it doesn't show his light as good as he's right. been all these years. So. We gotta yeah. give him love too. Straight, straight love, man. Well, so the episode top five Champions League finals, and I'll start off with my number five. This is gonna interest oh, you, my boy okay. CY. Definitely. Oh, man, I know where you're going with this. I know where you're going. Barcelona with this. against Arsenal, oh. 2006 oh. Stade de France. Arsene Wenger, Frank Riker, the year of Ronaldinho, bro. You know what about you know what's crazy about that final, right? I think were we but did, I, we didn't watch it together, right? You know what? I feel like we. I don't. I don't. I don't think we did. I don't. I don't think we did. I think. I think we. You know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I think I watched it in my house, but you see that final, right? It was one of those things where it, it, it reminded me of today, which was weird because. Arsenal had a great season, one of the best Champions League seasons. You guys beat Villarreal in the semis. You beat Madrid. You beat Juventus. That was a rise of Fabregas. And then you knew that there was a little bit of like, there was, there was this star that kept following Arsenal somehow. You knew that Arsenal deserved that Champions League, right? And then on the other hand, Ronaldinho had one of the best years we'd seen from a football. Like Ronaldinho, I know he's one of your biggest idols. Like, Oh. That was, he, he basically changed the game at that point. And that final, why, why I have it at, in my top five at number five is because the way the game, the way it started with Lehman getting the red card and then Arsenal coming back to put in a goal in the 37th minute, right? Campbell. And everybody thought like, oh, and you know, Arsenal fans, you guys are just like, we don't, we don't hear what, <laughs> like, I'm just going to speak my Nigerian. Like, it's, it's one of those things where it's like these guys almost had it. Arsenal almost had it. And then this guy came on, Henry Clarsen, in the 76 minute, assisted Samuel Eto'o, put it in the net, and then Belletti just wrapped it up. Eto'o, bro. It, it was, it, very, it was very, one of. Very, very, very underrated player. Under, all time. Underrated rate player all time. It was a final where Ronaldinho didn't really have the best performance but it was just the icing on the cake for his ballon d'or yeah because he had done so much and it was like there was just so much intense especially for arsenal because since then you guys have not gone back it's it's you know it's hard to hear this story man because i feel like that's one of the most painful moments of my sports watching life man you know bro i had a friend cry like hey. this dude he was in tears when this thing happened <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's it was one of the hardest days, man. In fact, that whole that whole season, bro, just building up to that moment and to have everything. Uh, I think what really what really summed it all up is that that particular championship or Champions League run, you know, having Henri leave, you know, and go to Barcelona after that, man. You know, that was the final gut punch, man. I, 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 you know, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was just too much. That was the. Too much. It was like, and that was the first time because me, when I played soccer, I, look, I looked up to Henry as a Man United fan, which was very weird. Oh, like, I, I, I tried to sure. model, yeah, I tried to model my game <clears> around <throat> him. And I always thought Henry was invincible and immor- immortal, immortal, right? Yeah. And then I think in the sideline where he ran past Belletti and then dribbled Puyol, they got a corner and I saw Henry tired. Like that was the first time I had seen Thierry Henry gassed out because of the pressure in that game the intensity in that game and just that that willpower to try and just hold on to that lead you know and unfortunately man arsenal <laughs> arsenal missed Hold out it, but, man. Folded, it. but let me let me hear your number five what, what you got number five man so for my number five um uh, you know i i I kind of thought this one through. I thought it over and over. And I, I'm going to go <clears throat> with one of the biggest Champions League shockers of all time. That's number five. Um, Porto winning the Champions League. Oh! Porto, 
Monaco Porto. Porto. Yeah, what? Monaco versus Porto. Monaco Porto. Wow. Exactly. Man. Okay. You know, to, to, I think that for me, the the reason I give, and you know, I, that's the whole time that Jose Mourinho, it, which is incredible because a lot of people don't give Mourinho the same credit. I think a lot of that is because of his Premier League time. You know, English media have always looked super hard on Mourinho, but <clears throat> to take that Porto team and win the Champions League at, you know, this is, I'm talking about a time where we had the Galacticos, we had Arsenal at their very best, we had, you know, Manchester United, with Chelsea, Wayne, and all these, and you know all what these mean? guys, yeah. So we're talking about the top of the top of the line of football, and for them to come out with Jose Mourinho, and after that season, he left to Chelsea. He won that Champions League. No, I, I think it, I think that's it. So when they played, when they played <clears throat> Monaco, I think Mourinho. I think I respect more of the season. Rather than the final, the because final. The, yeah. Monaco, the season was, it, it, bro. What they did to Man Man U at Old Trafford, and I think um, I may be wrong, but I think Deportivo La Coronia, what they did to those guys, that was the like nobody had heard or seen what these guys were gonna do. Like Mourinho was at the top of the game. The final, I I I would say was predictable. Cause, Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. No, no. I mean, you have a good point, man, because. I mean, of course, Porto going in, they already had the momentum and everything, but to get that done... To get that done, something yeah. To, something to get that, that, you know, legendary Champions League run, but to get to that final and to win in such a, you know, clear and... Clear, for, final, yeah. 3-0 that, yeah. against Monaco. That was, and, that was, yeah. Was okay. Incredible. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. So, number four, moving on to number four. I would say Man United Chelsea 2008 at Moscow. Uh-huh. Um, that okay. was that year was a special year to me. I I I think so so many things happened that day. I watched the Champions League and I will say this to any fan out there. If you've ever experienced your team winning a Champions League and I'm talking about a team you truly love, not you just be like one of those bandwagon fans, like a team you supported for a while. You watch and experience them, bro. It is the best feeling in the world. Like when you walk on the street, nobody can talk, can say nothing to you, bro. You can literally just tell somebody, get out of here. And they, they, they have to <laughs> get out of here, man. You know, they got to keep it moving. They got to keep it moving because so there's a little story, right? Okay. And, but that time, I think I was doing my YEC. So it's for, for, for our viewers, right? The YEC is a West African examination that we take um, in high school for us to kind of get, get ourselves ready to go to um, college. And I had an exam the next day, an economics exam, right? And I told myself I had a choice. I was either going to study for this exam or I was going to watch Man United <laughs> play Chelsea. <laughs> And you already know the choice I made. I don't regret it because I still passed, <laughs> but <laughs> I had to take it. I had to take the risk, bro. Yeah, yeah, it was. No it was so. It was one of those finals where, when Ronaldo, you know, Paul Scholes, and you know West Brown, tiki taka on the side, left leg in, Ronaldo heads it, and then right before the half, forty fifth minute, Lampard, bam. 1-1. One, one. And then it was just a game of back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then the interesting part about it came during the PKs. And that's when I, I, I when you talk about having your heart to your, to your mouth, bro, I was scared. Like, I couldn't talk to anybody. And then when I think Ronaldo missed the penalty, uh, it was left to John Terry to just, you know, wrap it up. I don't know the thing about English players and slipping. It's John Terry and Steven Gerrard. <laughs> I was going to talk about the John Terry. I was like, I just, I just thought about it, man. There's something about English players and slipping, man, in the right moment. But Stevie anyways, G. Stevie G. <laughs> Shout out to Stevie G. Shout out to Stevie G, man. But when Terry slipped, right, and I was supposed to be the winner, but when Terry slipped, I said, oh, my goodness. Like, are you... You know, it's one of those moments like, oh, it's meant to be. And it was like, United are back on. And they were just back and forth, back and forth. We go into sudden death. And then 
Anelka of all people, man. Nicholas Anelka, who is actually very clinical in taking PKs. Van der Sar just does his thing. And we win the Champions League. That day, my left toe, I cut it, was bleeding. I didn't even know it was bleeding until the next day in the afternoon. So when I started feeling dizzy, I saw my toe. I was like, oh, I, I'm bleeding. <laughs> That's how excited I was. I lost my voice. You know, I, I was, I, I felt on top of the world, bro. But that's my number four. My United, Chelsea, 2008, Moscow. Um, Fergie versus uh, Avram Grant. You know Great what? Game. That, you know what's funny is? That's also my number four. Chapter. No way. I no probably, way. Yeah. No I way, gonna, really. I, I define that as <laughs> John Terry slipping game. The, so, <laughs> that, that's, that's, you know, why that game is so remarkable is, you know, um, I was in I was in high school, you know, when this game happened. I like, I mean, I'm not trying to show my age. I'm kind of an old man. <laughs> but you know, that was like one of my final years of high school. But you know, John Terry, um, that penalty shootout and everything. The, it looked it, the momentum, everything. And there's something about United because you know United has makes my list quite a bit. When you as you will notice, as yeah. Go by. But yeah. um. United has a thing for the dramatic, the theatric, all this, all their games are all, you know, the Fergie time, or, you know, you know what I mean? But you're like, man, I hate these refs or <laughs> there's gotta be, you know, there's always the Fergie's controlling the league type, type conversation. But, yeah. There was something always controversial about United, man. And as yeah, a fan, but, I won't lie. I used to block my yes to that, but I knew, I knew like there was, guys, but there, was, there was magic in it too. Magic, there was magic, right? Absolutely, I, because I, you know I'm one. Of, I'm not a believer in all those years. Like I feel like if you win, you win. You like, win. That's, Straight that's up. my yeah. Thing. I don't make excuses for teams like and that John Terry moment to slip the captain and John Terry that year was, bro. He was probably at the the head of football like. I'm talking. He was he, he, him and uh, Nemanja Vidic. They were both the best defenders in the world. You know, what I mean, this is prime John Terry. Like, I know John Terry. Of course, you know things have happened to him after football. But you know, if you were if you grew up with us, like you would know John Terry. Is, oh yeah, JT, an absolute legend. JT. Like, for so, me, one of hands down one of the best defenders for me ever, ever, ever. You know, I mean, you got to show respect to the Italians. You know, the yeah. Chiellini's and the Maldini's. You know, but. Uh, John Terry for English football, like, hey, yeah, he's, hey. he's that guy. So, like, to slip in that moment, captain of Chelsea, um, to, to, to have that moment snatched from him by United, especially considering the fact that Chelsea was on the uprise. I'm talking about they had the Lampards, they had the DDA drug bars, all of it, and it felt like that I, was I, it. You know what's crazy about that? They had just fired Jose Mourinho at okay. that time. And the manager was Avram Grant, who I don't even, I'd never heard of the guy, but for some reason took Chelsea to the Champions League finals, right? And Chelsea was one of the most feared teams in the world. It wasn't even a Premier League thing. Chelsea had become that dominant force that just played a type of football that you could not really understand what they were playing, you know? You know, I, 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 as an Arsenal fan, because, you know, we're from the Tiki Taka, we are the literal, we're the Barcelona of the English football. Like, Chelsea, Chelsea and United, like, even though you guys were different in some ways, a lot of your football philosophy was the same. Right. You know, the crossing, the spreading the ball, you had Paul Scholes, controlling the midfield, spreading the ball, Lampard, all these guys. But Arsenal's more, you know, we're going to take it, we're going to play from the back. So, that Champions League final was one heck of a, you know, when you play the, when you spread the ball, like the games are a lot more dramatic because you have all these whip crosses, like, you know, it's not super industrial. They are trying all types of things to win. So that was one of the best games, you know, and to have it come down to that moment, uh, you know, yeah. man, <laughs> I, I all, definitely I'm agree. The start. <laughs> oh, <laughs> don't go there, Edwin. That, so was, uh, on the that was that was man. It's a time after that. I, I I I'm just happy I got to see my team win a Champions League. After that, obviously, we never got we never won again. But we went to a couple finals. But I I think that was special. That was a final where for every United fan, they would always always remember. Um, moving to number three, my number three top five Champions League finals is 
Der Klassiker. Bayern Munich against Dortmund 2013. Wow. wow. The Iron wow. Robin special. The Iron okay. Robin special. The okay. last minute Iron Robin special. Okay. At Wembley, Klopp versus Hankis. <sighs> Why? So, for for those, so for, for, for soccer fans around the world, right? There are rivalries that are just unique in its own way. And this is one of the rivalries. Even though Bayern are clearly dominant in that rivalry. But whenever we have a chance to have these two teams play, Dortmund against Bayern, trust me, it is a classic, classic encounter. Always, always special. And this was a game where you had, it was like a David Goliath kind of game. Bayern, the champions of Germany, the champions of Europe, like they had dominated everywhere. And then you have little, little Dortmund coming up the rise, taking care of Madrid, you know, playing, playing the most attractive football. And that's where Lewandowski, uh, uh, what's his name? Gundogan and Ruiz and Gotts and all yeah. these, all these guys were just up on the rise. So it was like a David and Goliath contest, right? And you go into the game for some reason, there's this tension, even though you're not a, if, if for 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 you know Premier League fans or La Liga fans or whatever fan you are that is outside of Germany, you could always tell and feel the intensity in that game. Like as soon as the game kicked off, uh, D- Dortmund start to pressure, and people are like, "Oh wow, these guys are actually gonna do it." Dortmund start to pressure, and then Bayern have like one chance, and then no goals first half, and then the party starts in the second half. Once Robin started to get the floor, you know I am Robin, man. That guy is like a is like a pest to every team. Robin gets into the game and then assists to Manjusic. Manjusic, Man, yeah, I butchered his name, but you know assists to Manjusic, and then right after eight minutes after <clears throat> Gundogan pops in, so everybody's like, oh, it just needed one goal to get the party started, and for some time. Bayern looked like they were going to win, but you could always tell Dortmund was trying to sneak one in. But then in like the last minute of all minutes, because many people had already said, you know what, we're going to extra time. This is probably going to be a penalty. And then in the last minute, I Robin just comes up and just, they, I think there's a name they call the finish he did. It's like a, a rolling finish because he didn't even, he did not even like, he, he just kind of like rolled the ball a little bit and just, placed it in the bottom corner and it was like wow Bayern actually won this game they stole the game in the last minute and for all the Dortmund fans in the world it's like man how could how could you how could it why would it go this way because they were this close this close to winning the Champions League and then all of a sudden it just the no, Iron Robin special yeah hey I, I mean I actually love that one man because um Robin, especially his his story too, is very very unique. Considering you know the Chelsea times, he was injury prone, um, and to go to Bayern, him and Ribery created the. I know everybody talked about Salah and Mane, but they were Salah and Mane before. Salah yeah, Mane. yeah, yeah. They were terrorizing people on the wings, man. So, um, it's, I think that's a beautiful one, man. Germany, Bayern Munich. I mean, they're, they're classic car. <laughs> yeah, they, they're just they're just mean, man. They're just out here taking all the champ, all the Champions Leagues like Madrid are. So, you know, shout out to Bayern too, man. And shout out to the Croatians, man. All Mandzukic, oh, for real, man, for real. Mandzukic, Modric, all these guys are killing it right now, bro. They've been killing it for like ten years straight. So, we got to show love to the Croatians in football. So, for my number three, I I love your number three. Uh, for my number three. Oh man, this this one. Um, after what United did to Chelsea, for Chelsea to come back and finally win a Champions League for themselves, you know. Uh, I know, I know where you're headed with this one. I'm gonna go for 2012 Bayern yep. versus Chelsea. Um, you know, in Germany. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to it, man. In the DJ Drogba, the DJ Drogba. You know the man himself, man. The man himself. You know that's the Drogba game. You know Drogba is one of those strikers, man. Like you know, like you said, he loves the finesse guys. And I'm a Arsenal fan. Like 
I, I'm one of the people that that's a believer in like score this goal however you need to, man. Like yeah, all that, get it done. All that, get the job all that, done. You know, sexy finish. Like nah, I, I don't it ain't working. <laughs> really, just hit that ball as hard as you can. And Drogba has been that guy, you know. So to see Drogba, you know, his story come full circle after losing to United, um, heartbreaking Champions League final, come back. They go into, there was 1-1 going into penalties. Tough fought game, of course. Chelsea's has always been a super defensive team. And, you know, German engineering. Bayern, you, most Champions League stories have Bayern in it. Like, you know, yeah. winning or losing. But yeah. they're, they're, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, they, they there's so much in the mix. <laughs> yeah, they, they don't play around in, in Bayern. So, you know, to have Drogba come and, you know, after scoring, go to the penalty shootouts and score the game-winning penalty to secure the Champions League for Chelsea in his final, uh, you know, Chelsea season. That was his final game for yeah, Chelsea. Yeah, I, I think so. I think so. And so, then he, he left and he came back. Absolutely yeah. incredible, man. That drug by Lampard duo, uh, one of the greatest Premier League duos we've had. So, you know, to have them be able to complete the journey. I was hoping that would happen for my boy. And you know what's Jerry crazy? <laughs> and, uh, you know what's to- crazy? They won that game in Germany. They in, did. In Bayern's home. Like, in, and absolutely. there was no way because Bayern were already counted out. Like, it was one of those Bayern scored and you already knew, hey, Bayern are taking this home until, you know, who Didier Drogba. <laughs> <laughs> the Didier Drogba special. You gotta let them know. <laughs> let them know. <laughs> you gotta let them know, man. Drogba. There you go, man. Yeah, I don't know right. if you're I, right. I, like, I like that list. I like that. I like that. That, that, was, no. that was, I almost had that on my list, but that it's good that you put that in there. I like that. I like that as number three. Yeah, bro. <sighs> I mean, you know, Chelsea, Chelsea, Chelsea's Chelsea has come a long way, man. When we we're, I mean, when we were super young, they were not what they are today, but they. they yeah, are, yeah, they come a long way. They, they've come a long way for sure. Shout out Chelsea. Man. Chelsea. So you're gonna probably hate me for this, man. I'm just, put, I'm just putting. Here, man. I'm just putting it out there. You're probably going to... No, you're going to... You, why is it you're going to hate me for this is because you're going to be so surprised why I have this as number two. All right, two. let me see this. AC Milan, Liverpool. AC Milan, Liverpool. Okay, yeah. number Three, two? Number, exactly. Yeah, I know where you're going with number one. This is blasphemy. Hold on, hold on. Number two. Now, you said blasphemy. blasphemy. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Now, so... For... <laughs> This final, let me just—I oh, okay. I, lost—I lost a lot of money on this game, and I was—I was betting when I was what thirteen. Like, how old was I? I can't remember. Uh, two thousand five, about fourteen or something, or thirteen. Because I bet with my brother. I told him that Milan was going to win this, and he said, "Okay, cool." And we all know the story. Three Shout new up. <laughs> three new. Up. Let me tell you a little story. So when AC Milan were three new up, right? I already. The money I bet with my brother, I took it, I spent it within half time, right? And it wasn't much compared to the dollar, the naira back home in Nigeria. But I took it, I spent it. I went to go and buy myself. So many of you, if you know what suya is, it's like a spicy, delicious <laughs> meat. I bought myself a That's- ton of suya and I just, I was calm. When you talk about, I was relaxed, I was eating it. And then while I was eating it, Gerard scores. I look at the suya yeah, man, no, and, I look, and I look at my brother. I'm like, yeah, okay, it's, it's all good, go. man. I can still eat. And then right two minutes after, Smiths are scores. And I'm like, oh, these this, this people ain't playing right now. Like, this is this is about to happen. And then Alonso, obviously, the penalty. And I just, I couldn't believe what I had just seen. And as a young fan back then, you thought that, okay, this comeback usually... Does, it, it happens, but, you know, Milan would take it. And then all of a sudden, that was the first time I witnessed single-handedly a, ch- a change in momentum when it comes to a football game, right? A soccer game, a change in momentum. We're talking about two completely different halves of soccer. AC Milan first half, Liverpool second half, and then they go into penalties. They go into extra time, and then they go into penalties. And then we all know what happens. Jersey Dudek saves uh, Andre Shevchenko's penalty. Shevchenko, man. But 
why this was up there is because number one, no team has ever done it. It's the first time a team has come down from oh, three, three I new. Yeah, I can't see that happening. A team coming back from three new to tie the game three three and win the whole ch- win the Champions League. And that was the rise of Gerard and Rafael Benitez and all these guys. And we we as football fans, we fell in love with that Liverpool team. Right, that 2005 Liverpool team, because you knew there was no quitting with these guys. Because if you were up to new, you were not safe for Liverpool. That was it, straight up. You're up to new, you're not safe for Liverpool. No. If you're up three new, you're not safe for Liverpool. They had no quit with the in them, man. They had no quit. no quit, and the same thing. If if you remember that season when they played Olympiacos, there's a famous commentary right about Gerard's finish, where the commentator goes like Gerard. You know, yeah. the shot outside, right? That was that same season. Stevie G. Like, everything they did that year just worked. They were terrible. They, they, they were okay in the Premier League, right? Yeah. They actually finished fifth outside of the top four. Because they won the Champions League, they had access to go back to it. But they were... Everything they did in the Champions League was just like magic. It was like a movie, you know? Perfect. I get just hearing you talk about bro this again. it was it was a movie because like you 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 were playing against the Milan side that Antelotti was managing they were so good Kaka was on the rise Shevchenko Perlo Sidov all these guys everybody Kafu man. Dida you could there was no way Liverpool were going to win like you'd be no like way. nah there's no way Gattuso. it's not going to happen Gattuso Gattuso <laughs> All the these guys, there was no way they were going to win. And they were down 3 new, And they come and tie 3-3. Three, three. That's my number two, man. One of the greatest finals I've seen, man. Let me let me hear what you got. Uh, <clears throat> so, I think we flip-flopped on the final I, two. I, <laughs> I think we flip-flopped. Because um, I, I don't know how you said that story. Right? That's not number one. You went all in on them, man. I, I, I'll, uh, I, let me... I, I, yeah, you probably flip yeah. but let me hear. Let me hear your number two. For my I number two, I, I like I said, good. for some reason, you know, even though I grew up hating United, I think it knows ah, yeah, anybody. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, don't get me started about United because we were we were rivals. I know you can't really call it rivalry now because mm. uh, I mean, you know, it's it's not the same. But growing yeah. up, United Arsenal were like sworn enemies, you know. So United in '99. Ha. Ah. Right? 99 <laughs> the rise of the baby faced assassin so you know, sure uh, this united team i'm talking about this is this united team had been uh they've been on the rise i mean you this is this is when the alex ferguson story really took off you know fergie you know say Feel up how you want to feel about him but you know we're talking greatest managers he's he's up there yeah you know, what are you having yeah. Number yeah. one, but um, you're not going to tell me a top three and not have Fergie in there. You right. know what I mean? So Definitely. We got we to gotta show love. To have the nerve, right, to put a young Solskjaer in. One, you're one nil down. We're talking about final minutes of the game, you know. Um, everybody's pretty much giving up on that game. You know, United is, United is already packing it in. It's pretty much done deal. Solskjaer comes in. You know, final couple of minutes, gets the first chance. You know, Bro, I'm, I'm having it. I'm having goosebumps right now. You know, like I'm, I feel like I'm in Camp Nou when the game was played, man. <laughs> Bro. That's, that's the first chance. <laughs> I'm talking clinical finish. You know, and so mm-hmm. mind you, this is this guy is not. He's not the fastest. Mm-hmm. He's not the strongest. He's just, you know, there's some strikers in soccer that just have it, like. Like they just had, they like, just had it, yeah. Watching his eye, they just know, you know what I mean. They just know how to get the ball in the net, and he scores the first goal. You know, he and actually scored. Like, he actually scored the winner. So Sosha scored the yeah, winner, right? And then both. Sherry Sherryham, Teddy Sherryham, Teddy Sherryham scored the first one. The fir- so, sorry, Teddy. so yeah. So remember, Giggsy, the Beckham played it in. It got kicked out. Giggsy kicked it in, and then Sherryham just tapped it in at the top uh, bottom, bottom You're left. Right. Not well, you were, you, you, you were right about the so, social got oh, that sure. clinical finish. With the 90 and then in, in, in extra It was the time. last, it was the last kick, last kick last of the game. Last kick of the game, you know. 
I'm talking people ready for overtime, everybody getting their popcorn and all. I told you I was the most. <laughs> You know, the smallest guy on the field pulls up with the biggest finish, you know. Um, I think that's one of the most incredible things in football. Uh, that That's – and it's it's good you shouted out Ryan Giggs, man, because that's, that's another soccer – That's game. another – that's another legend. Uh, like, I, I, it's it's great because we all I, – I, and I know your number one is – I'm, I'm guessing it's AC Milan, Liverpool? Absolutely. No. <laughs> that's like a flip-flop on that. I know that. Yeah, like – I, I think that that Man United that Man United um by United by Munich was there's just stories like you tell your kids right that they never experienced and as a kid I, to be honest I became a United fan the year after right but I watched what went on right I wasn't a United fan back then I've been a United right fan for over twenty. 20, 20 something years, 22 years right now, 23. But the year after you, the year after I became a United fan, but when I experienced that thing, I, bro, it was like, sometimes you think these football games are movies, like you're, you're writing a script, right? The game was done. See why? When I tell you that game was done, there was no way on God's green earth that Man United were supposed to win that game. That is why I have it as my number one. There is no way United was supposed to win, right? And then you just make two changes, just two, two changes. They come in, three minutes extra time. The first minute, Sherham scores. And then the third minute, Solskjaer scores. What are the odds? And then the famous quote from Fergie. <laughs> the call, I think the commentator was like, what do you think about that game? And it was like football, bloody hell. <laughs> like as a manager, you're like, what did I just witness? Like sometimes even as a manager, like, bro, I did not sign up for this kind of drama, right? But I think that has to be, for me, the best Champions League final. Man United, Bayern Munich, down a goal, and then you just have two minutes. And I'm talking about you, you didn't even play well throughout the game. But you just win a game. You, it's like you. It's a robbery. It's basically a robbery. You go in there, two two minutes, steal the game, and you're champions of Europe. And then you just that just puts the icing on the cake on the treble. <laughs> that was a treble season, mm-hmm. you know. So. You know, I think I think that, um, and I'm, I'm I'm of course my number one is is Liverpool Milan, but I think that it's important that you know. Because if you notice in both of our lists, neither of us had <clears throat> a single, um, what's it called, a single Real Madrid Champions League final. I think it's important for us to point out <laughs> that yeah. the reason that they're not there is because they don't they do just, all that. <laughs> <laughs> but well, I, I'll, I'll say the, <laughs> that's maybe a good the, point. Maybe, maybe the Leverkusen one with the Zidane. Zidane, right. Final. But it also I would also say the Atletico one. 1-1, one, one, right? But they beat them 4-1, but oh, it required God, yeah. it, re- it required like Sergio Ramos to, you know, the last minute, right? That's why I looked at it, I was like, would I have this on my list? I'm like, nah, bro, these guys got smacked. 4-1, Gareth man. Bale went crazy in that yeah. game, bro. Gareth Bale. That's, That's crazy. And you know what's crazy about this Real Madrid team? Like, all those guys are still there. Man. I don't know, you know, they're just, I, I was looking at the, when they were handing out the trophies and stuff, like, or oh, Hazard, Bill, all these guys, they just have them just chilling. I'm like, oh, all these guys just chilling on the bench in Real Madrid. Like, these are all-time ballers I'm talking about. So, shout out Madrid, man. They're OP with their squads, man. They're just they're just yeah. killing it. But Milan, I, I just thought we should, we should shout them out. Let's, you know, we don't want to let no disrespect. It just, yeah, for sure, just for sure. Respect. We didn't add you guys there because you guys are just on a different level completely. So, I'm going to say... Milan, Liverpool, for sure, number one. You said a lot of the important stuff. We got to shout out Crespo. To, oh, to, you know, Crespo. You know, I'm telling you, man, early goal to start the game. That game started off horrible for, and I think it's important, that first half, because everybody just writes on that. You yeah. know, Maldini, Maldini scored the first goal one minute into the game. And then Crespo with two goals going into half. You know, you know when you score people going into halftime? That's an ultimate heartbreaker, man. Not one goal, but two goals going into halftime, 39 minutes, 44th minute, two goals. 
and then you go into halftime and then Stevie G, you know, man, I don't know how to explain. There's something about Gerard, man. Like what you talk about Captain Fantastic, leader. man. Yeah. Yeah. What you talk about a sports leader. Like Yeah. I don't think there's any better, man. Yeah. I I, I, I agree. I agree. If Gerard told his teammates walk through this wall, man, they're going through that wall. Like, yep. you know what I mean? Like he came out and it you know, it, he always his his games always seem like a movie. Like he doesn't mm-hmm. just score the regular goals, he'll score some incredible Superman goal or you know, just it's not nothing is, is the easy way. Like everything has to be the hard way. So to come out to score that header, I mean, I, I don't even know how many headers he has scored in his career prior to that header, but the ball is in the air. Oh, yeah. man, PG is up there. And it's not an easy header, you know. He has to place it, finish it. And then, you know, the, the fist bump celebration. I'm thinking this, this guy is insane. Like, why are you fist bumping? Like, it's over. What, what, what's, <laughs> uh, what are you all about? Man? And after that, it was like they came out possessed, you know. We were talking Smicer. And this Liverpool team, like, the comparison as far as squad versus squad, the Milan players are light oh, years yeah. above the Light years, light years. Yeah. Who are the we're talking dribble? Cissé, I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to disrespect them, but Cissé is not, you know, Crespo or, you know, Shevchenko. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. these are next-level strikers. Like, so they have Cissé up front, you know, and for them to be able to go and snatch this, this game back, Alonso with the penalty, they go into penalty shootout, and you know to go into the penalty shootout and you know do that being incredible, saving all types of penalties nonstop, um, saving Shevchenko at the end. You know it's 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 just such a man. Even Dudek himself, like you yeah, know, he, he was surprised. Surprise. Like yeah. it's, not, it's not up there, but he's not up there. Thing, but... That's he, that he day, became a he legend. Was, he played us keep the most. Like, <laughs> like, like, what mattered most? You talk about clutch saves, like so. Uh, it, it's that's. I feel like that has to be number one because of how magical it is. I understand, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Magical. I, I think this is more. This is a. Uh, it's a united is, love, man. I, 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 don't, I know what's going on there. <laughs> it a little key though. I ain't gonna lie though. Like that's a little bit of united love. I was a little bit biased, but for me, that's why. Um, because it touched me in a different way. Like that Absolutely. was as a young kid growing up. That that moment kind of shaped my identity with Man United. But I, if you your list, I agree a hundred. Like that game, right? If the three three, I you, you can never write a script like that. Like if it's number one, I'm cool with it. You know, because that's 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 one of those. Yeah. Who in our lifetime we got to experience greatness? That's all I can we say. Did. We did. <laughs> yeah, we did. Ooh, man, that was a that's a heck of a list. Well, um, a lot of great football, man. Great football. Uh, just uh, appreciate the whole scenery that we've experienced, and uh, yeah, that's our top five Champions League final. Um, and uh, we just want to say thank you all. If you guys enjoyed this episode click the like button subscribe and we'll be proud to give you more content um thank you my boy cy it's always a pleasure uh can't wait to bring you more stuff more content out there and uh keep being a fan man we appreciate you this is the top five sports podcast be blessed be blessed guys have a good weekend